Hello and welcome to this Astranti Financial Training bite sized video. In, in today's video, we are looking at Mintzberg's organizational components, which is really useful for those of you that are studying for your E1 exam. And even if you're not, this organizational component model is a really good way to show organizations how different parts of it are connected which is really helpful when determining the relative balance needed for the organization to be successful so whether you're studying for E1 or whether you're just interested in business this video is for you okay let's get started Divide and conquer is normally something you say about your enemies, but what we're going to do is apply this phrase to the idea of structuring organizations. Because if a business can successfully divide, yet still successfully coordinate its activities, it's going to conquer its strategy. And what we're looking at in this model, as I said earlier, which was designed or created or thought of by Henry Mintzberg is the identification of five key areas of a business and each of these key areas of a business have their own unique contributing factors towards a business's effective production and a business's operations. Now Mintzberg came up with a definition for this design structure and it's the total number of ways in which an organization divides its labor into distinct tasks and then manages to achieve coordination between those tasks. And what we're looking at in Mintzberg's model is how the organization is connected. And by seeing this, an organization can help determine the correct balance it needs to achieve its success. So let's bring up the model here and I just click on my cursor. So at the top we've got an ideology and we're going to come on to these in more specific parts. I'm just going to talk through the model quite quickly now. Then we've got our strategic apex, our middle line, our operational core, our techno structure and our support staff. And we're going to begin with the strategic apex. Now the strategic apex controls the direction as well as the strategy of the firm. And the people normally in this level are the senior management and staff, which makes sense, doesn't it? Because it's the senior management that set the direction and the strategy of the firm. So remember what we're looking at here is a visualization of how an organization can break labor into specific tasks. So this task of controlling firm strategy and direction is done by senior management. That's how this labor has been broken down. Okay, let's move down now to the middle line. So we start at the top with senior levels of management and in the middle line we've got our middle and lower levels of management. And what they are doing here is linking the strategic apex so the direction and the strategy of the firm with the operational core where the processes and the day-to-day -day activities are taking place. And what they're doing, these middle and lower levels of management, is taking the strategies of the strategic apex and turning them into tasks and jobs that can be then assigned to members of the operational core. So again, this is the breakdown of tasks for the middle and lower management. Let's drop down now to the operational core and as I've already said the operational core undertake the day-to-day -day tasks of a business so this could be sales, this could be production, this could be providing services, whatever the business does. All we're seeing here now is just a trickle down from the strategies of the strategic apex, middle management turning them into tasks and then them being assigned to members of the operational core. And remember, this Mintzberg's model is all about visualizing how an organization breaks down its labor, divides its labor into specific tasks, and then how it's coordinated. And we can already see the coordination as we come down through the organization, can't we? Who's responsible for breaking the strategy down into coordinating it for members of staff? 
But of course, we've got two more areas of this model to look at, and this one is called the techno structure. And so what we noticed, hopefully, is when we were looking at the model, is the techno structure is off to the side of the model. So in our middle part of this model, we had a flow down from strategy to operational core. But techno structure are analysts. This is sitting to the side of the model because they're deciding on the organization's technology and procedures. Now, the aim of this area is to standardize the procedures of the organization. An example of techno structure would be a human resources manager because the aim of a human resources manager is to standardize something like the appraisal process, making sure that all across the organization the same standard appraisal forms are being used, the same appraisal procedures are being followed, and of course making sure that people are trained into following them. So here, set to the side, this techno structure is about maintaining, about producing, about ensuring that the procedures in the organization are as they should be and standardized. And we've got one more level of this Mintzberg's model to go and that is the support staff. And again this this area is sitting outside the trickle down of the middle part of the model because these are the support staff who are working outside of the organization's core processes. So perhaps this may include an organization's public relations department or the legal services or the research and research and development department, I should say. So again, we hopefully can see why these are set to the side because they're not part of the core processes we saw in the trickle down in the middle part of the model. And then, of course, right at the top, first thing we mentioned when we turned our attention to this model was ideology and ideology is the beliefs and traditions that make up the culture of an organization and it's sitting above the five elements of a model because the culture of an organization can affect the operations of an organization and so it's vital that it's considered a key area of a business so there we go we can see the model again in full. We can see the strategic apex sitting in the top, the operational core sitting at the bottom. And that kind of makes sense, I think, visually as the orders go down, turned into tasks by the middle line management. And then we've got an analysis to the left hand side and the techno structure and the support staff to the right hand side, kind of maintaining balance to the core operations. And we're not just going to leave it there, we're going to give you an example and we're going to use a professional cricket club. Okay, so what would we find at the strategic apex of a cricket club? And really, if you're not familiar with cricket, it's not the end of the world. Just kind of put in any other professional sport of your taste because it still applies. I realise not everyone really is into cricket, but that's that's not something that's going to stop you understanding this model. Okay, so we've got the strategic apex. Now at the top, we've got the decision makers, don't we? We've got the senior management. And for a professional cricket club, this would be the cricket club's directors. Now these directors are the people that have got the vision for the future of the club. And they're going to be thinking about ways the cricket club can grow, they want to make sure that the cricket club is competing for honours and making sure it's winning the league or winning tournaments or whatever sports club you've chosen as well, whatever their aim would be. But what I've not mentioned in this list is day-to-day -day runnings. It's all about strategy. It's all about direction. And it's all about making key decisions to ensure that the club is going to succeed. Then, of course, we're going to drop down to the middle line, the middle managers. Now, for a cricket club or for any other kind of professional sporting team, this is when we come to the, the first team coach and the stadium manager. And these are the staff that are involved in the general business side of the cricket club. These guys would want to be making sure that the facilities are of a really high standard. 
they'd be making sure that new sponsorship deals were coming in and they'd be making sure they were bringing in the playing staff they wanted and getting rid of the playing staff that they didn't want. So this would also involve for a sports club, the team management. Now each of these managers at the middle line stage would have their own teams. So for example, you might have the first team coach who's responsible for the playing staff. Then you might have the stadium manager who's responsible for the stadium team and making sure that the facilities are high. Then you would have the cleaning team, make sure obviously everything's clean. All of these middle managers would have their own teams because remember, they are taking the strategy from the strategic apex and turning that desire, the aims of the organization, into tasks for our next level, which is the operational core. So this, for our cricket club, would be the playing team. But it would also involve the people that are involved in maintaining and running the stadium, the people that were in the middle manager's teams. Now, for example, if we just stick to our cricket team, their main responsibility as players is to make sure that they are playing to the best of their ability in every match. And so what the operational core is trying to do is to make sure that the customers receive the, the highest quality of service that the customers expect. And for a sports team, I mean, I'm a football fan. What I expect from my team is that we win every match. Unfortunately, I'm a Leeds fan, so I, I rarely get my wish. OK, so that's our core operations going from the strategic apex down to the operational core. Now let's turn our attention to the techno structure and perhaps in our example, the cricket club, the techno structure would be quite small because there wouldn't be as many standardized procedures as there perhaps would be in a manufacturing company, say, that has loads of products and each of those products would have its own operating procedures. And in that instance, a techno structure would be far, far larger. However, with our cricket club example, there probably is going to be a technical coach who is aiming to standardize the training and perhaps the stadium manager is also going to be setting out standard procedures so that every day or in every match the ticket sales are standardized and the sales of food and drink production are standardized. And I mentioned the stadium manager in techno structure and that's important to note that in this cricket club the stadium manager could be both in the techno structure and the middle line. But in other organizations, such as a manufacturing organization with lots of procedures, there may be a dedicated role because the role is so much larger. And we've got one more final section or part of Mintzberg's model, and that is, of course, our support staff or administrative staff. So for a cricket club, these are going to be the employees who work in ticket sales or in the finance department who are helping to support the overall work of the organization. And then finally, of course, we've got our ideology. And this would be with the cricket club, making sure that the reputation of the club is maintained, the culture of the club is maintained. So perhaps our cricket club has a reputation as a family-focused club. They always play entertaining cricket. Well, this then may impact the entire way the club is run. The types of players that are selected, the training, the fact that they would be marketing towards families more so than any other customer segment, and so on and so on. So we can see why Mintzberg has included this in his model, because the culture, the ideology, has can have direct impact for how the operations are actually carried out and how they are aimed. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video. In it is everything you need regarding Mintzberg's organisational components to pass your E1 exam. And it all it took was about 13 minutes. Now, I hope you found it interesting. I hope you found it informative. I hope it's going to help you with your studies because we at Stranty want you to pass your exams. If you need any help in passing your exams, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can talk to us about exam questions or study texts or if you want just receive more of these videos by liking or subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for listening today and of course good luck with your exams.